Hello. Welcome to my Carto Row. Let's play a little game. If you were drawn to this reading, I in intended it for air signs, but technically it's for you, whoever you are. It's for the viewer. Let's play a little game, viewer. I have three stones in front of me. One of these three stones correlates with one of these piles here. It does not matter which stone you pick. Let your intuition be the guide. I have the red mookite. Red mookite. I have the rose quartz. Rose quartz. And I have the opalite. Opalite. While you're letting your intuition guide you to a stone, I will see you at your pile. Do be sure to leave a like on the video while you're thinking about it, so, so that I may connect with you. I appreciate you. My name is Ebony. See you at your reading. Hello. Alright, this is for those of you who chose the opalite. The opalite stone. I'm using the ethereal visions to row today to paint your story. Guys, uh, the, the idea behind this little game is to take a look at your energy and then we go over what you need to be paying attention to at this time. What messages Spirit has for you and your role, what you may go be going through ascension-wise as a starseed or a light worker. For those of you, if this does not resonate with you, be sure to check out the other piles to see if something in that message resonates better with you at this time. All right. Ace of Cups, kind of in reverse, underlying on the split, King of Swords in reverse, definitely dealing with air, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, <clears throat> showing up as you do, Guide Spirits, Benevolent Beings, what is the current? Energy, please, for pile one. The sun in reverse. I feel like you need clarity. You need clarity on an issue. What is the current energy, please, for pile one? What is the current energy? Thank you. Okay. Five of Swords in reverse. <sighs> the issue is self doubt. Self doubt. Self doubt. He holds the sword very close to his chest, but his eyes are wide open, and they're blind. He has no eyeballs. No eyeballs. You don't see the sun in reverse. You do not see. What don't you see, Libra? I said Libra. Some of you could be Libras, or have Libra in your chart. Seven of Cups. There's confusion, overwhelm. You're afraid to show your face. You're afraid to show your face. Why are you afraid to show your face? Confusion, overwhelm. The dinosaur, the lizard, there's been snakes around you. Geckos. You might be seeing lizards a lot at this time. 
You're very confused just about what you need to know, what you should be doing. I feel like you're on the rise, though. King of Pentacles underneath here. Why is everything in reverse? Am I holding it everything in reverse? No. So, the issue then is stability. What action should this person take at this time, please, Spirit? What action should this person take at this time? You're going to be seeing an increase in your finances. It kind of was on his side, but in reverse, Five of Pentacles. You're going to be seeing it. The, the issue is definitely money. It's finances. You're going to be start to see an increase in your finances, whoever you are. If you've been feeling... Even I feel like recognition, you might be working more than one job at this time, doing more than one thing, one task, and it's kind of draining you. It's making you second guess yourself, second guess your intuition. Um, you just don't feel on it. You don't feel at your best, as it were. Interesting. Where should this person not focus? Where should pile one not focus at this time? You got an increase. If money is the issue, and I feel like that is for many of you, yeah. Putting down your burdens, okay. Some of you have stacked too much on your plate, and you're wanting to release it. Some of you will be, if this is Ten of Wands in reverse. You know, the burdens are choice of what we carry on our own. So there's nothing on your plate that you didn't put there, Libra, but I feel like you want to downsize. I keep saying Libra, so I have a feeling whoever you are, this is for you. All right, there you are, King of Swords. I could be speaking with a masculine Libra at this time. A masculine or masculine air sign. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is an air reading, by the way. So welcome. You're here. All right. Beautiful. You... I feel like you have been doing a lot of the work and not getting proper recognition for it. Five of Swords, this could be people in your energy who are projecting onto you. Libra, um, or any air sign, whoever you are. Pile one. I suggest maybe getting some protection stones for yourself right now. Maybe some obsidian or black tourmaline, um, even some evil eye. Evil eye is not just for protection, it's also good for wealth. So is uh, pyrite, pyrite like I have here, beautiful pyrite for attracting abundance, absolutely. Thank you for those of you, if this does resonate with you, for leaving your good, loving energy on the channel by liking, subscribing, helping helping me to grow my beautiful community here at White Crow to Row. I want to continue bringing you guys these messages, and I do appreciate your good energy on the channel. Guys, I uh, forgot to mention, I am celebrating one year on YouTube, so thank you for tuning in. All right. Uh, people projecting is causing confusion. You actually I feel like covering your face, Libra, is partly a good thing. You're going through a rebirth with the skull here in her hand. There's a rebirth, a sense of change, not much, a little change in what you're doing that brings about a great um, a feeling of coming out of the cold, a feeling of stagnation. A feeling of money loss it's coming back in fact your your finances are going to increase your about your growth and expansion I feel like is going to increase you just had to tweak something and drop a burden drop a burden maybe ten who knows backing you up yeah eight of one eight of wands in reverse like you could not take action right but you wanting to, Knight of Swords, it's like something was stagnated for you. Communication until you dropped a burden or made a small change. All right. 
We're now moving into your oracles. For pile one, um, part of the game is actually, it's really fun. It's called Ask the Wise Fool. I used to love these, this game as a kid. So, okay. Something you could do at this time is use an old guiding star. Let me see, we have here the Big Dipper, the Big Dipper. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to read part of the star to you, part of this card. It says, Polaris is our North Star, believe it or not. <laughs> the one around which all other stars appear to rotate. But Polaris's role as the night sky's center isn't fixed. As the Earth rotates on its axis, it also wobbles like a spinning top over a 26,000-year cycle. The Earth's axis draws a ring through the northern sky, and any star along the ring gets a turn as the North Star. Right now, Venus is the North Star. Thuban, a star in the constellation Draco, was the guiding light the ancients used to find true north. The Egyptians used Thuban to align the Great Pyramid of Giza. Neolithic British tribes used it to lay out Stonehenge. And early Babylonian astronomers used records from a Thuban-centered night sky to create their highly accurate calendar. But nothing lasts forever. Due to the Earth's wobble cycle, Thuban, was, Thuban has drifted away from the north and will move nearly 47 degrees away from it by the end of the year AD 10,000. But here's the fascinating part. Thuban will start working its way north, and by AD 20,300, it will once again be the Earth's north star. Thuban's movement through central Thuban's movement from central importance to obscurity and back is a useful metaphor and can be applied to our lives. Hello. What long ago guiding star in your life, idea, belief, strategy might be used, useful to you once again or at this time? So maybe you've taken a back seat in your life or maybe even for a time. Um, to find your own true north, whatever that may be. Maybe you have been the guiding light uh, for others, and now you are kind of shifting in the night sky, as it were, as the constellation, It's and it's another star's turn to become the center of attention, as it were. And so for many of you, that, that that's kind of an analogy of what's going on. It feels like you're not the center of attention, for some of you, and so you're, but you, you're still a star, you're still shining, but it's like you're, it's like you're becoming your place as the Earth's North Star has shifted, but that, but your own North Star, whatever, wherever that is, you may be the North Star for another constellation or for something else, right? Just because you're not Earth's North Star at this time doesn't mean you're not a star. However that resonates. But also, like what long ago guiding star, what long ago passion or idea is inspiring you at this time? Very interesting. All right. We have several messages here for you. <laughs> um, let's start from the back. Okay. All right, interesting. Speaking of another star, we have from the Oracle of Visions, we have number 19. And these do not come with explanations. They're kind of left up to interpretation. I may read this one from you from the book. But from here we see a woman sitting in a chair, a snake crawling up the pole here to the apple. There's a red curtain behind her, sun shining in through a through a ship portal light. We have the thinking man beside her with a portrait of Rene Descartes. A portrait of Rene Descartes. Her hand is tethered. Her finger, her index finger, as a matter of fact, is tethered to this 
monkey, this lemur, as a matter of fact, a lemur, interesting. Some of you really connecting with Lemuria at this time as star seeds. This is partly your message. You are a star seed. And she's doing a lot of heavy critical thinking here. Critical thinking. Rene Descartes, famous for I think, therefore I am, right? I am what I think. I think, therefore I am. Be careful where you're giving your ideas. Also, number 19. Number 19. Let's read. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Okay. Number 19. Contemplation, analysis, and awareness. Man is the only animal for whom his own existence is a problem <laughs> which he has to solve. I love that. <laughs> While we share common traits with all, other, with all other living entities and are indeed linked to them in so many ways, our humanity is probably best defined by our awareness of ourselves. We alone can look up at the sky and contemplate our role in the universe. We alone have the freedom of choice and the capability of rational thought beyond survival and procreation. We alone can question relative values and choose right from wrong. Our consciousness is both a blessing and a burden. It provides us with the ability to ponder and question. More than any other living entities, we have the capacity to consider variables and options for the future, and to be either encouraged or concerned about the possibilities. We think, therefore we are, and it is the human condition, it is the human burden to be burdened by our own existence, as it were. Right. So, in pondering our existence, use an old guiding star what is useful to you at this time? The old no longer works, and with the ascension happening, nothing is what it seems anymore. The old is shifting out. If you think about it, we're now at we are now at a point in time in history when Atlantis was at its peak. Do you realize how far? We've come, stepping into the age of Aquarius. We are now, right now, at where Atlantis would have been at its peak. That's how far ahead we are. There have been hundreds of civilizations on this planet. Thousands from other worlds. And your starseed message is emphatic starseed. You are an emphatic, emphatic starseed. You see how she's drifting from one reality into another here, going through a portal. Energetic sovereignty and absorbing what's not yours. Back to this Five of Swords. You could be taking on, because you're doing a shedding, shedding of energy, questioning what is your role in the universe. You could be having kind of this identity crisis, as it were, <laughs> or it seems like that. It seems like that, like you're having to question your role in society and who you are. You're also absorbing energy from around you, and it's important to recognize and remember that not, not all energy is yours. You can be picking up on what's around you or what people or what others are projecting at you because they are also going, we are all feeling this ascension in our own way, right? <laughs> yeah, we're all feeling it, absorbing what's not yours. Can you differentiate the energy that you are giving out versus what you are receiving? Your Aboriginal message is resilience, and you got two actually, Lady of the Lake. Resilience. You've been through it. You've been through the ringer. 
you're coming out on top no matter what you have been through, okay? You are coming out on top. You are coming out better than what, better than you were and better than you would have been because the lessons that you have learned or had to learn or are learning at this time are shaping who you're meant to be and who you are. You are resilient in that sense. So never doubt, don't ever doubt what you're capable of. Okay? Never doubt what you're capable of. You're beautiful. Whoever you are. Whoever you, whoever needed to hear that. You're beautiful. I really like this energy for you. We also have um, Lady of the Lake. Now, this is the story of King Arthur and the Lady of the Lake. For those of you who've ever read Limo d'Arthur, you know the story of King Arthur. King Arthur is gifted the Sword of Excalibur by the Lady of the Lake. But he is gifted the Sword of Excalibur to do it. Well, the idea was that he would prolong the worshipping of the Lady of the Lake, the goddess, right? That to obtain the sword of Excalibur, so I know like King Arthur and his sword, right? <laughs> to maintain the gift that Excalibur brought was to make to make offerings, to keep the religion or the worship of the goddess go on an ongoing practice. What it's really trying to say is keeping your relationship with spirit an ongoing practice. But Arthur forgot about the lesson. He forgot about his connection with spirit, basically. So spirit's trying to remind you, day. If you're being initiated here with your resilience and you're questioning your identity, which is definitely part of an initiation, let me tell you. <laughs> For those of you who need to know, if you're questioning your role in the universe, yeah, you're here for a reason. Very much. And also, you have a, an important mission not to forget what you came here to do. Right? And you'll come back thousands of times. You'll come back thousands of times after this lifetime. This is just one. You're not meant to get it all correct in one in one lifetime. You're adding to the evolution of raising consciousness. So, no stress. Your Archangel Guide at this time is Archangel Sandalphon number five which is the higher font in the standard right away. So this could be, you may have some Taurus in your chart, in which case, welcome. Archangel Sandalphon is guiding you. This may be a, an Archangel you may want to call upon in meditation, Sandalphon. The search for meaning in life. <laughs> Consider an alternative approach. Surround yourself with wise teachers or friends. So surround yourself with people who are on the mission that you are on. You are not alone. And part of the spiritual journey is we think we're alone. It initially starts that way. We think we're alone all the time, but we're not. Spirit's right there. We just forget that, right? <laughs> it's kind of like, we think we're doing this all by ourselves. And then the Spirit's like, no, no. No, young Padawan, no. <laughs> You're not. Okay, it just looks that way. All right. Uh, you have divine guidance at your disposal, whoever you are. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. But you have to ask, of course. The problem is, you and I can relate. I can relate. I'm relating heavily to this reading myself. Is that <laughs> you don't always know what to ask for, right? You don't know. And many of you have forgotten. So you just don't know. You just, well, I know I'm supposed to be doing something. What? 
Spirit's trying to just get you to release your burdens so that you can see what it is. And I feel like for many of you, it's something very um, creative, as it were. Very creative. Yeah, look at that. Your purse, your 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 luck, your number for the month is number seven. Some of you could be, of course, born on the seventh of any given month. This is about personal growth for you. Um, born on the seventh of any given month. The Merkaba. This is about personal growth and journey. What you're going through. What you're going through right now. I wanted you to just kind of sit with the energy of this card. Because they actually help to um, realign your chakras. Just staring at the energy of the Merkaba. You could be seeing a lot of geometric shapes at this time. Um, but these have codes in them. These cards, these colors. Even. Some of you are highly intuitive with the purple here. Um, seven, intuition. I feel like I'm... Sp and look at all the purple in your reading here. Like three purple cards here in red. Purple and red. Very interesting. Um, could be good colors for you right now. Seven. A lot of purple. Really beautiful. Oh, wow. Well, you're one sexy card because, you know, had to have some sexy message here. We have the Six of Pentacles. The equal give and take. And he's kisses Casanova. And he's looking back on her as she enters the bathroom. Six of Pentacles. Now, I know this story. He wants to balance up with her, and she knows, or may not know, that she's being watched, but I think there's a part of her that does know. Because she left the door open on purpose. But someone is sneaking. Someone wants an equal give and take. Without, but you don't want deception. Someone can't figure out how to get to you. Vice versa. He's watching from afar. You could have been a faraway admirer at this time. Someone who's been watching you. Watching you while you work. Someone who sees you even as resilient. Or what you've gone through. Doesn't have to. Guys, you don't have to have anyone see any of this. To know what you've gone through. In fact, most of you probably won't. Most of you won't. No one will know. That's okay. No one will know your personal journey. That's okay. Because it's yours. What long ago guiding star in your life, idea, belief, strategy might be useful to you once again? as you are reinventing yourself, reinventing yourself, whoever you are. This was your message. I hope something in this reading did resonate with you. Please let me know. Leave a like on the video. Uh, stay tuned for the other messages if you don't feel like this was your story at this time. I will see you in the next reading. Take care. Hello, Pile 2. This is for those of you who chose the Rose Quartz as your message at this time. The Rose Quartz. This is for Pile 2. Welcome. Pile 2, do be sure to leave me a little like, connect your energies to the channel and with the reading so that I can pick up with you, pick up on you. Thank you. Guys, I am celebrating my first year on YouTube, and I'm trying to get to 3K by the end of the year, guys. Do help me do that by leaving me a good like and a subscribe while you're thinking about it. I do appreciate you. If I get to 3K by the end of the year, I will be doing more lives and giving away free readings on the channel. I will also be giving away uh, admission, a lucky admission into my master class so please do that all right for pal two wow strength and temperance <laughs> right on the split goodness strength and temperance 
Could have some heavy fire in your chart, Leo, Sagittarius. Needing strength to withstand time, or time reveals your strength. Needing courage to break free of a situation. A breakthrough. Breakthrough. Putting the pieces of a puzzle back together. We're kind of working backwards. And this is a game, right? Because you're meant to ask. So the idea is to look at your energy and what you need at this time. What do you need? We're going to ask the wise fool today. His advice would be. Advice for pile two. Hang on. Hold the phone. Hello, we have Sniff and Opportunity. Sniff and Opportunity for Pile 2. Ask a Wise Fool. The Wise Fool is on the lookout for opportunities, especially in situations where things have gone sour. For example, after the Great Fire of Rome raised most of the city in 64 AD during Nero's reign, Roman officials realized they needed to rethink their basic construction methods to prevent future conflagrations. <laughs> the result was a radically upgraded building code in which the use of wood in beams was discouraged. This change allowed the widespread use of a fairly new building material, pozzolona enriched concrete. This flexible material freed Roman architects from constraints such as right angles and allowed them to develop new shapes, such as the dome and the vault. The catastrophe of the fire served as a catalyst for architectural change. If the idea you're working on were burnt to a crisp, would you be able to sniff out an opportunity in the ashes? Ah. So whenever you think something isn't working, Pile 2, what can you do at this time to change it? Or if something has already totally come crashing down, okay? You don't know this, but I actually saw a tower right before your <laughs> confirmation. Thank you, Spirit. If something comes crashing down, what can you make from the rubble? That is the question to ask yourself at this time. Sniff out an opportunity. What can you, what catastrophe can you turn into your opportunity, into your opportune moment to shine? What is the current energy, please, for pile two? Spirit. The Neville being. Show me clearly. What is the current energy for pile two? Lot of fire in your chart pile two, Queen of Wands. Confidence. Confidence. Oh, face into the future. Removing your mask. Removing a mask. All the fire. I'm i I'm feeling like Phoenix rising from the ashes. That's literally what I feel from this card right now. And she dons blue wings. A blue cape. Blue wings. Blue wings of intuition. Sagittarius, she's got her bow in her hand. Heavy Sagittarius. <sighs> Needing to remove, putting on, a, taking off the face, taking off the face, removing the face. Something, you may want to check out Pile 1's reading, if you are. If you were also drawn to that, to that pile, check theirs out. Something about removing a mask, but also... It's her face. It's her face. The face of something. You are the face of something. What is the challenge at this time for Pile 2? Entrepreneurial. Something you have built. Yeah, literally built. Your empire. Emperor. That is the challenge here. Emperor. Something you've built. Sniff out an opportunity. Rebuild. Rebuilding something that you have built in a new way, in a stronger way, in a more constructive way, in a better way. Rebuilding something. Where should Pile 2 focus at this time? A lot of fire. Let me know if you're dealing with Aries. 
in Libra now, justice, balance. There's got to be balance in your effort and your output. She wears two dresses here, or like red and white. She's got justice has four hands here. She's busy. <laughs> if you've got any Libra in your chart, you're dealing with a Libra, or you are a Libra. This is an air placement, right? She's got a knife, she's got a key, she's got a book, she's got a heart. Mott is busy here. Something about the sun and moon, something about birthing an idea, an egg, the egg cracking here. You saw the egg, the snake emerged out of the egg. The woman was birthed, strength was born out of an egg. Oh, and the strength in this deck is represented by the snake. Interesting. You were bound, but then you broke free. Your spirit broke free. How interesting. With justice here, you become like spirit. You become two versions of yourself. Wow. Also, be careful what one hand is doing that the other hand can't see. Or, like, pay attention to what the left hand is doing. <laughs> okay, where should this person, where should pile two not focus? There has to be balance. And there's someone down there at the base of your feet. What are you doing? Scattering butterflies. Scattering transformation. How interesting. How interesting. Where should this where should pile two not focus at this time? Show us clearly. Where should pile two not focus at this time? I actually love that question. There's a reader on YouTube right now. Um over at Libraland 1010 and she asks that question a lot. I'm so inspired by that question and just shouting her out. If you haven't tuned in to her, please do. Libraland 1010 is amazing. I absolutely love it. All right. Don't focus on lack, whoever you are. Don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you're building. But don't focus on what fell. Don't focus on what burnt. Don't focus on what you're having to rebuild. Because you will be the King of Pentacles. You don't have to give your focus to any sense of lack. You are the King of Pentacles, whoever you are. All right? And Queen of Cups right behind that. Love and what you do. You're about to step into abundance if you... If you were worried about that. Heavy Taurus energy here with the King of Pentacles and Cancer with the Queen of Cups. Heavy Fire, whoever you are. All right. Let's get into these oracles, see what we're... Wow. Hello. All right, your big oracle today from Cyril Marchetti is number 33. The ballerina in the pond. It's kind of like a master 33, right? 33. Some of you could be 33. Some of you, it's a master year for you. I'm going to read you this card. <sighs> you're on the rise. This is a very heavy Piscean energy that you're dealing with here. With this master number 33. On the rise. She's tethered to the koi fish. The koi fish have to transform like rebirth, right? The koi fish travel up the Yellow River in Japan till they meet Mount Fuji, where they transform into the dragon, right? Into the dragon. Enter the dragon. Ooh. If you have a new Libra on your chart, there's a reading on the channel called Enter the Dragon. I have a feeling 
It may be useful to you. Or to whomever. There's a reading on the channel. It's for Libra, but it's called Enter the Dragon. And I think you will find it rather interesting. Okay. Patience. Waiting for the right moment. Time is but the stream I go a-fishing in. I drink at it, but while I drink, I see the sandy bottom and detect how shallow it is. Its thin current slides away, but eternally remains. Henry David Thoreau A ballerina casts a golden line in Laura with which to capture a desired goal or an, out or an item. The process is calm and planned. The pace leisurely. There is no rush nor looming deadline. She will know when the right time has come and the moment is appropriate. A kingfisher, a harbinger of tranquility, accompanies her, and together they will wait. Despite the desire for results, some occasions or decisions simply should not be rushed. We should approach either with caution or restraint, waiting for the opportune moment. We must also be wary of being too indulgent and devoting too much time waiting for some imagined perfect moment, person, or thing. Worthy opportunities may be lost if we are overlooked in anticipation of some intangible, better option to arrive. So, it's one of those things about divine timing. It's like, wait to act too soon, you miss the mark. Wait too late, wait too long, you miss the mark. So, how do you tap in with your own sense of personal, like, divine timing and guidance when to do something? When you feel right. It's, uh, if you have the energy to do it, do it. If you have the time to do it, do it. You don't have to rush it, though. Just do it. Get into a pace that serves you. And I feel, for many of you, that as you step into uh, just being consistent, going at a pace and a leisure that works for you, not against you, don't feel like you're constantly pushing against the current or against the, the flow of the current. Go with the current sometimes, right? Don't always battle. You don't want to battle the stream. You want to go with the flow. Go with the flow. So, maybe you didn't get work done this week. Maybe you procrastinated. Maybe you needed to. <laughs> maybe some of you needed to heal. You took that time off because you were receiving downloads. Integrating. Don't be hard on yourself. You have to heal. You have you have to take do do at your own time and pace. Okay. For some of you the issue is speaking as well. Maybe some of you do a lot of public speaking. Alright, you have your starseed messages, we the Hawthors. Wow, what a lineage here. We the Hawthors. Beautiful. Deep love. Mother's milk. Birth as a portal. Birth as a portal. It can feel like that. It's like giving birth to ancient knowledge. The wisdom that comes from you or that you're stepping into is so old, is so ancient. <laughs> and you're just remembering who you are in all this, but you're not alone. The Hawthors want you to remember that you can always ask for guidance when you're unsure. So don't forget that you have a team around you of warriors. Deep love. The Hawthors, shamanic priestesses and guides of ancient Babylonian and Egyptian, but also something. I'm not getting what Mother's Milk is about just yet.
significant, though. Something to do with fire as well. All right. Your Aboriginal card is the Green Chakra. Green Chakra Goddess. Let's read her, shall we? The green chakra goddess presents your heart, which is located in the chest area. The green chakra goddess teaches us the principles of balance, love, and self-control. She is generous with her love, yet is able to balance her romantic side with the understanding of and compassion of unconditional love. The green chakra goddess connection to nature is part of the balance that she requires to self-nurture and find her own self-love. When she is disconnected from the energies of the earth, she becomes unsettled and flighty, which affects the way in which she manages her daily life. It's time you reconnected to the energies that nature so willingly shares with us. Lately, you have felt the feelings of discontent and have begun to notice the subtle changes in your behavior, and in some instances, not so subtle. <laughs> Something has changed for you, and the time you once spent connecting with nature is no longer available to you. It is time to take a breath, to take a breath, and take a break. Go outside and touch the ground, and take a few deep breaths to reconnect with the vitality she has to offer you. Allow the energies of Mother Earth to recharge your batteries as she shares herself with you. You will be amazed at how quickly you feel refreshed and recharged by taking these simple steps. This is a gentle reminder of how important your connection to nature is and how easy it is to find strength from Mother Earth. Ah, that is Mother's Milk. Mother's Milk. Gaia. Gaia is reaching out to you. You literally feel her. Go outside for those of you, especially for those of you who chose this pile. Go connect with Gaia. Take a day, take an hour, go outside. Take your shoes off, walk in the ground, walk in the dirt. Remember why you're here. Because from that connection, you will sniff an opportunity. You will become ruler with fairness, balance, right? And you won't feel like there's a lack or a point of stagnation with the Four of Pentacles. Because underlying this whole issue is a King of Pentacles. So I ain't really worried about shit. Not at all. Not at all. Ah, I see. Interesting. Alrighty. <laughs> How very interesting. You're the Archangel, or the energy that's working with you at this time, is Archangel Jophiel. Jophiel, number 15, is technically the devil. Right? Saturn. Saturn energy is what is working with you at this time. Archangel Jophiel, call upon her if you need her. Release yourself from that which holds you back. A need to detox. Unnecessary worry based on a lack of self-confidence. So, for a lot of you, this is just like confidence, right? Queen of Wands. For a lot of you, this is just a reminder to you that you need to nurture yourself. Okay, and taking the time to do so, you will feel refreshed and recharged with energy. The only toxicity here is knowing that you haven't been doing that, probably, right? Not taking the time that you need to really connect with your inner guidance and 
do justice to yourself, right? Spirit's going to kick you in the ass to make you remember, hey, hey, don't forget, do honor and nourish the temple that you sit in, right? Okay, decision, needing to make a decision. Chain yourself not to your flaws, but to your best habits. Chain yourself to what you're good at, or, you know. <laughs> Find a tether that serves you. If you're going to be chained to something, it better be good, right? Right, Joe Fuel? And this energy green, green here, number four, perseverance. Perseverance is your number. Could be your lucky number for the month or for the rest of November, or just what you need to hear right now. Perseverance. Absolutely. You can rewind and stare at that card as long as you need to. These cards actually hold light codes in them. They're really good. So whether you know it or not, you are rebalancing your chakras. One second. We're back. Okay. Final message, guys. Try to have a sexy message in here for you, you know, but got to get what we get. We get the hanged man. <laughs> All right, Piscean energy, number 12. Number 12, something went on hold or something is asking you to pause and reflect on what you need to do. Um, you know, he's making a go for it. He's making an escape. He's going for it. The hanged man, where he should be resting, no, he, he's, he's escaping. <laughs> He's an escape artist. You need to escape, but escape into your own surrender. Escape into your own healing. Maybe just escape for a couple hours. Who knows? You need to get away. Get away, pile two, from your worries and doubts. A moment. Not forever. I hope this message did serve you. Do let me know, guys. Please leave a like on the video. Let me know what opportunity you're sniffing out for the month, for the rest of the month. Can't wait to hear. Take care. Hello, Pile 3. Welcome. If you chose the hello, red mukite stone, this is your reading. This stone, you've been jumping out of my hand all night. Jumping out of my hand all night. I've been jumping, jumping, a little jumpy. <laughs> Love, jumping away, mm -hmm. energy, sacral energy. It's been literally jumping out of my hand all night. Mm. Interesting. Guys, uh, something resonates, do be sure to leave a little like on the video. I am celebrating my first year on YouTube, guys. Thank you. Thank you for all of you who are tuning into these readings. My first year on YouTube as a tarot reader. I am so excited. So happy. Thank you for all of you, for my White Crow family who's been number one supporters since this little journey began. I do appreciate you. Um, and I want to connect with more of you guys, so remember to leave your good loving energy on the channel by giving me a like and a subscribe. Make sure to hit the notification bell because, you know, YouTube is funky that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do all that. Support your girl. And let's see what's getting in to you. Getting in with you. Page of Cups. Potential love offer. Interesting. Guys, help me reach 3K by becoming a part of the family here at White Crow Tarot. I reach 3K. I will be going by the end of the year. I will be doing more lives and some giveaways. And I'm very excited about that. So, join the family. Someone who's new, but not new to you, is returning very soon. It's new, but not new to you. It's new, but not new to you. Kind spirits, benevolent beings. Let's paint a clear and accurate story for pile three. 
No more beings. What does pile three need to know at this time? What is the current energy for pile three? We're playing a little game today, pile three. We're going to ask the wise fool a question. We'll see. He's going to have advice for you. And maybe a story or two. The emperor. Kind of in reverse. The emperor. Something needs to be legitimate. Something needs to be finalized. You want a legitimate connection, whatever it is. No bullshit. Could be an Aries, or you could be an Aries. Have Aries in your chart. Doesn't have to be. Queen of Pentacles, underlying here. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, heavy Capricorn with the Queen of Pentacles. Doesn't matter. It's about our empire. We need something to be legit. Someone who's a go-getter, who takes control, who takes the lead, but also someone who's intuitive and comes from an intuitive place. Someone who's connecting as it were. Red. Heavily. Heavy red. Red. Alright, what is the challenge for Pile 2 at this time? We are taking control with the Emperor. We need to. I saw that Emperor partly in reverse. Someone, maybe... Some of you came out of a situation where you were being over-dominated. Sure. Abuse of power. Abuse of some sort of authority. What is the challenge, please, for Pile 2? Too much. But I will take it because I did see this energy during the shuffle, and I feel like it wants to come out. Seven of Cups is a challenge. Where you should focus is the Hierophant. Where you should not focus is the Hanged Man. Pile two. For pile three, excuse me. Underline, we have the High Priestess. Some of you are going through, I feel like, kind of a spiritual light, uh, spiritual enlightenment. Who? Yeah. Maybe even a spiritual awakening. Heavy, some of you. Queen of Cups. Wow. Sorry guys, it's like when my intuition really kicks in and it just starts to flow. Fuck. Uh, some of you are heavily psychic, by the way. If you have any Pisces in your chart, holy hell. Okay. And that's the only person the High Priestess talks to, by the way. Some of you aren't speaking with your person right now. You're not talking. Talking. Doesn't even have to be a person. Again, this doesn't have to be person-related. I designed these readings not to necessarily be person-related. But I'll point out what I see if I see it, yes? Okay. You're not talking about this transformation that you're going through. Because your, you know, emperor sits on his throne. He has, he has to maintain status, stability. It's a lot. It's, you're going through a lot. You've got a lot on your plate. A lot you're managing. Seven of Cups. You've got options, but it's also overwhelming because some of you could be seeing rainbows at this time. Rainbows. There's a whole palace here. You're going to have options, <laughs> but it's more than that. It's not really options. It's like the Seven of Cups is choose wisely, you know, choose carefully. Because with the spiritual enlightenment, with the spiritual awakening that you've got going on here, oh yeah, I feel it. Heavy. You've got the higher font and the high priestess here. Four major arcana for you and the seven of cups. Yeah, I'd say you've got options, pal three. Okay, heavy God. Because careful what you wish for, because it just might come true. Your intuition knows it. Keep quiet about what you know. The High Priestess doesn't have to speak. The Higher Font, all-knowing, right? Both of these two figures, all-knowing. She's all-knowing about the internal world, what we go through on the inside. He's all-knowing about the external world, what we go through on the outside. 
And they both need each other. You need both of these figures in your life. I'm speaking to a highly spiritual person at this time. Starseed, whoever you are. Let me know if you have some Taurus in your chart. You could be seeking guidance as well from some sort of political or, or religious figure in your life. You could be this religious person. You're being called to see something differently. But actually, you're being called to not procrastinate, to work on your connection with the divine, to do more of the work. The high priestess knows she holds the book of the Torah in her hand. She sits in front of the pomegranate veil, the curtain here, okay? Where you should not focus at this time is the hanged man. Don't worry, if you're worried about delays, forget it. It's done, okay? The hanged man may cause you to pause and reflect, but don't go into procrastination. Not to wait too long. There is a there is a part of you that has to surrender to the process of what is going on or what is taking place here. But I feel like for many of you, you still have, you have stuff to do. You feel out of control, out of control. It's like it's just happening to you, whether you want it to or not. You don't know how to articulate what it is that you're going through. It's overwhelming could be seeing things as well so it's a perspective that you didn't have before I know that all right let's first of all I forgot to do this we meant to ask a wise fool first let's do that let's ask a wise fool for some advice here about your situation so we have Look for a second right answer. There's more than one solution to a problem. And the idea is to get you to see it. In 546 BC, Croesus, the last ruler of the Lydian Empire, Emperor, consulted the Delphic Oracle for ideas on how to deal with his enemy, the Persians. He received this prophecy, if you attack, a great empire will be destroyed. Croesus took this as a positive sign and led his army against the Persians, fully expecting to win. Instead, he was soundly defeated. And it was his empire that was lost. He should have had a wise fool helping him under interpretations or to find other interpretations. Don't stop with the first right answer you find. Dig deeper and look for others. Indeed, seeking many right answers is a surefire way to stimulate your imagination. As French philosopher Emile Cartier put it, Nothing is more dangerous than an idea when it is the only one you have. What's the right answer, or what is the second right answer to your problem? What's the sixth? What's the tenth? What's the seventh? There is more than one way to skin a cat. Okay? This is two, and this is two. Just depends on which way you look at it, right? Both are two. Two and two. Two. <laughs> right? Okay. So find an alternative solution to what you're what you are seeking, what you are looking for. Hmm. I like it. Can we find an alternative solution? A different way. The hanged man. Number two. Two, the high priestess here. Yes? Okay. Hello. Here we have number 14. There are no explanations on these cards. I will read this card to you, but I kind of want to let your own intuitive guides do the talking.
She's an artist, for sure. She's got the sky of blue, is her intuition. Some of you are sky gazers, sky watchers. You paint some of your artists. Your artists. Interesting. You paint what you know. You do what you know. You do it well. You work in the arts for many of you. And it's about putting your creative ideas to work. Is there a second alternative to what you're doing? Is there a second way to go about the goal that you're trying to achieve? There's something you're deeply searching your intuition for that you need guidance on. How to bring, how to bring your ideas to life. There is more than one way to skin a cat. Creativity and imagination. How did I know that? I have never read this card. Each day is a new canvas to paint upon. Make sure your picture is full of life and happiness. And at the end of the day, you don't look at it and wish you had painted something different. In its myriad forms, creativity is an expression of your humanity and imagination, both in its production and its recognition. To take shape, color, form, sound, or words half and give them a new life, is an act of creation. Various symbols of the tools and medium through which you through which creativity is expressed are worn by our artist as a decorative headdress of imagination. Sometimes creativity can consume our thoughts as slow burning embers waiting for release. At other times it is a spontaneous explosion of inspiration. Either way, it is a wondrous human characteristic and there are infinite varieties of individual expression. But alas, also an infinite variety of assessment by others. So, it's kind of like, are you the artist or the editor? Are you doing the art? Are you creating the art? Or are you critiquing the art? Fuck your haters and fuck your naysayers. There's always going to be someone critiquing you. Okay? And more often than not, it's by someone who never had the knowledge, the willpower, or the ingenuity to come up with it themselves. So, you're here doing it and doing it scared, right? You're here coming up with solutions and thinking outside of the box rather than being confined and stuck within an old way of thinking. You don't have time for that. You have too many, you have too much on your plate here. You've got all these creative ideas, these juices flowing through you, and spirit helping you, right? Deep wisdom with the Hierophant. Your knowledge runs deep, so rely on that. Rely on your smarts as well as your intuition. Find a way to combine the two to make something unique for you. I didn't mean to rhyme, but, you know, it do what it do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The wait is over. If you've been procrastinating on this, because I know that Seven of Cups can be fucking frustrating, you know, when you feel out of control or when you feel like things are out of your control. But the wait is over. The wait is over, you little starseed. You, whoever you are. I feel like Aquarius, if I had to give you one, this would be yours. All right. It's not time yet. Things are being woven in reverse. Oh, it's time. It's been time. If you're wondering whether or not to take action on those creative ventures and ideas, the answer is yes. Go for it with vigor and gusto. Like yesterday. Okay. Like yesterday. Get on it, is what Spirit is saying. Twice. Don't focus on procrastination. Don't focus on taking a nap. Focus on doing and getting it done. High Priestess. Okay. We have an emotional response as your Aboriginal Goddess card. An emotional response. You are creating an emotional response. Absolutely. 
and that yellow, like the yellow here of the cup, is about your solar chakra, which is all about creativity. So my creative thinkers out here who are wondering, what the hell, what should I do? Why do I have all these emotional blockages? That might be quite literally what's going on here, just some emotional blockages, right, between you and your creative thinking and your creativity. I feel like you just want to have an emotional response to your own life. But especially what you do should require as much. <laughs> emotional responses are your body's way of disseminating information. It's your body's internal system, providing you with responses which we often cannot find words to describe. Our feelings guide us to understand the effects of what is happening or being said to us on an emotional level, and assist us on how we should respond to the information. You think that this situation is the answer to your prayers and that it offers you a solution to a long-running problem. Your gut is telling you that it doesn't add up. But your fear of missing an opportunity to solve the other problem outweighs your ability to be rational. Don't be deceived by the situation. It is not what you think it is. You are being conned. Only you are blinded by the glittering prospects and opportunities you think it has to offer. Mm. At this point, there is still time to extract yourself from this situation, but only just. If you continue to be entangled for much longer, there will be a big emotional price to pay. The best solution to your problem is only a few weeks away. You've waited this long. Why not wait a few more weeks to see what wonderful alternatives the universe has to offer you? You won't be disappointed. All right. But I stand by what I said. If you're feeling the emotional call, it's because you won't be waiting for much longer, if at all. By the time you're seeing this video, who knows? These cards, some of these cards, guys, have actually been sitting on my desk for several, several, like about a week or so. I'm just not getting around to doing the readings, so. <laughs> By the time you see this message, it could be the perfect time, opportune time. Who knows? Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, <laughs> your Archangel card guides walking with you at this time is Archangel Raguel. And you pull the Justice card. Raguel is your Archangel at this time walking with you. Or calling upon you that you may call upon him. Yep. Fight for justice and equality. Rulings made in your favor. Don't give up. Rulings made in your favor. Don't give up. Fight for justice and equality. Things going in your favor. Number eight could be significant to you, of course. Depending on which tarot deck you're using, some, some tarot uh, justice is number 11 and some tarot justice is number eight. It depends which tradition you're using. <laughs> Some prefer the Thoth method. I think this one is derived from that. Anyway, I don't know why that's important. Maybe some of you are studying the Thoth deck right now, or Thoth. Mm -hmm. You got Surrender. Number 91, 91, angel number, you may want to look that up for yourself. 91, surrender. Piscean energy here with the hanged man is about surrender. It's about surrendering to the divine. I see, I see. Surrendering to the divine. 
surrendering to the process that what is meant for you is coming for you. You are doing the work of working on yourself in the meantime, of healing yourself in the meantime. Don't give, don't give a damn about uh, goals. Like some of you were like content creators. I feel the need to say you're very creative at what you do. And it requires a lot of your time. And when you put a lot of time into what you do, but you don't see the payout of, of what, of the time that you put in, it can be very discouraging. I know, guys. Uh, and I've, and I've been there. I just want to say I've been there. Um, you know, I myself as a, as a content creator, a YouTuber, I have seen channels with you know, nothing against my fellow light workers out there ever. It's not about them. It's about me. It's like you see growth happening around you, but not to you. And that can be discouraging. And then it's like, well, wait a minute. Do I need to start a whole new YouTube channel? Like some, some people said, and I've heard it said, like, yeah, as soon as they started their new YouTube channel, their channel started growing. And I'm like, well, Maybe that's what I need to do because I, I put in a lot of work, but I'm not seeing, or I wasn't, I should not say that. For the longest time, I was not seeing the growth. So for those of you who are seeing this, um, I really do appreciate you. Please know I put a lot of energy into these readings for you. <laughs> okay. Those likes really go a long way, by the way. And if you're not subscribed here, please consider doing so. It connects your energy to the channel so that I can read for it as well. And I do appreciate you. I don't know why that plug came in at the last minute, but I feel like it wanted to be said, so I'm saying it. Because I know I'm not the only one who feels it, and I feel like a new relaying part of what I've gone through with you, collective. It's all, it's all applicable. So don't feel like you're not growing. Wait a second. You know what I mean? Um... Ace of Pentacles. That new beginning is coming. That new beginning you've been waiting on? Oh yeah, it's coming. It's right around the corner. Love it. I hope this reading did resonate with you in some way. You let me know. Please do leave your good loving energy on the channel. Guys, help me get to 3K by the end of the year so that I can go live and do free readings for everybody, as well as give away some giveaways. I am excited. I am so excited. Help me. Do that. Subscribe. Help me reach 3K by the end of the year. All right, guys. Thank you.